Good day, fellow disciple of Jesus, with me in the School of Christ's Love. Welcome to prayer on Thursday, the 8th of June. Both today and Sunday, we will be celebrating or marking Corpus Christi, the body of Christ, the institution of the Lord's Supper. The actual feast day itself is Thursday, today, and we can also celebrate it on the Sunday following. I'd like to celebrate Corpus Christi because of the very central nature of the Eucharist in our worship life at St. Philip's. Not every Anglican church celebrates the Eucharist each Sunday like we do at St. Philip's. Some alternate and make use of morning prayer service. But the Eucharist is pretty embedded, and beautifully so, I would say, in the life of St. Philip's. Here's a little note on the Feast of Corpus Christi. Corpus Christi is not officially observed in the Anglican Church of Canada's calendar. However, many parishes do keep this celebration, and this feast has always been included in McCausland's, this is the guide for our liturgy printed each year, has always been included in McCausland's. The tone of Holy Week and the events of the betrayal and the agony in the garden on Monday, Thursday, makes it difficult for many to wholeheartedly celebrate the institution of the Eucharist on Monday, Thursday. Thus, it has become more common to observe Monday, Thursday in a more restrained way. With red hangings and vestments, the exclusion of bells and the Gloria. Therefore, the first Thursday after the season of Easter allows a fuller celebration of the centrality of the Eucharist in the life of the Church. Although Corpus Christi is not in the Canadian calendar, it is observed in a number of places in the Anglican Communion and the Church of England's common worship. End quote. So our readings today will reflect the Feast of Corpus Christi. Ponder with me the tie for the readings with the institution of the Lord's Supper. We'll take a deep breath together, we'll pray, and we'll begin with Psalm 63, verses 1 through 8. Let us pray. O God, your Son, Jesus Christ, has left to us this meal of bread and wine in which we share his body and his blood. May we who celebrate the sign of his great love show in our lives the fruits of his redemption through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 63, verses 1 through 8. O God, you are my God. Eagerly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you, as in a barren and dry land where there is no water. Therefore I have gazed upon you in your holy place, that I might behold your power and your glory. For your loving kindness is better than life itself. My lips shall give you praise. So will I bless you as long as I live, and lift up my hands in your name. My soul is content, as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips when I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the night watches. For you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings I will rejoice. My soul clings to you. Your right hand holds me fast. Let us pray. Eternal love, our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Let your glory shine on us, that our lives may proclaim your goodness, and our work give you honor, and our voices praise you forever. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I think the psalmist chosen to celebrate Corpus Christi because the psalmist speaks of an internal longing for a God, a longing that feels like thirst, that feels like being hungry and weak in the body. My flesh faints for you, my soul thirsts for you. And then the psalmist responds in verse 5, My soul is content as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. For me, the Eucharist really does feel like spiritual food and drink. For me, I feel closer to God after I've had the Eucharist. 
And I love to offer thanksgiving for the Lord's sustenance. Of course, this is not everyone's experience of the liturgy of the Eucharist, and it certainly isn't mine all the time. There's a lot of variety in how I respond to the Eucharist. How about you? Does the Eucharist feel like real spiritual sustenance, or is it more an act of worship and remembrance for you, the remembrance of Christ's death and resurrection? And now we're reading from Exodus chapter 12, verses 21 to 27. Again, we're looking for signs of the Eucharist in our readings. Then Moses summoned all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go at once and select the animals for your families and slaughter the Passover lamb. Take a bunch of hyssop, dip it into the blood in the basin, and put some of the blood on the top and on both sides of the door frame. Not one of you shall go out of the door of his house until morning. When the Lord goes through the land to strike down the Egyptians, he will see the blood on the top and sides of the doorframe and will pass over that doorway, and he will not permit the destroyer to enter your houses and strike you down. Obey these instructions as a lasting ordinance for you and your descendants. When you enter the land that the Lord will give you as he promised, observe this ceremony, and when your children ask you, what does this ceremony mean to you? Tell them then, it is the Passover sacrifice to the Lord, who passed over the houses of the Israelites in Egypt and spared our homes when he struck down the Egyptians. Then the people bowed down and worshipped the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This recounts the institution of the Passover. We call Christ the Passover lamb that he was given for our sins so that we would be protected from the consequences of our sins, the judgment of God. Note too how the households were instructed to continue to celebrate the Passover into the promised land and to instruct their children in the meaning of the ritual. And we do the same concerning the Eucharist in our tradition. And now we're reading from Luke chapter 22, verses 7 to 20. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Where do you want us to prepare for it? they asked. He replied, As you enter the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him to the house that he enters, and say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large upper room, all furnished. Make preparations there. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them, so they prepared this Passover. When the hour came, Jesus and his disciples reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer, for I tell you I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. The Gospel of Christ Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In Luke's version of the institution of the Lord's Supper, we see the mystical power of Jesus who foresees the place where the preparation for the Passover would take place. We see the foreshadowing of his suffering. He says, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. And we hear the words of institution, some variants of which we proclaim each Eucharist as we gather. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you. Jesus tells us to do this in memory of him. And it is the, uh, the one great act of the church's obedience to Christ by continuing to celebrate the Lord's Supper.
When Jesus tells us to do this in remembrance of me, it is different than just remembering what we had for breakfast this morning. It is a calling to mind of Jesus' sacrifice, but it is also a reenactment that we all enter into and participate in once again. The purpose of this, of course, is to draw us more intimately into the presence of God in calling to mind and reenacting the events of Christ's great sacrifice for us. In the Eucharist, we become participants in the drama. And in the faith of the community and by the power of the Holy Spirit, we are touched by God. May the Lord draw us more deeply into the reality of God's loving presence with us at all times and so powerfully in the celebration of the Eucharist. May it never just be wrote for us, but a spiritually rich experience of connecting with God. Thanks be to God. Amen. The bidding today is in faith we pray and our response is we pray to you, our God. Let us pray. Lord, listen to the prayers of your people who so often gather at your table. In faith we pray. Together we pray to you, our God. At the table we celebrate how Christ gave his body to be our spiritual food. Listen, O Lord, as we pray for his body, the church, spread throughout the world. Lord, help the church to grow in these challenging days. Be with the church where she is persecuted. Grant her faith and strength. In faith we pray together. We pray to you, our God. At the Eucharist, we recognize the presence of Christ who takes away the sin of the world. Listen, O Lord, as we pray for that world and for its peoples for whom his blood was shed. Lord, we pray for rain to douse these fires causing such havoc and destruction in Alberta, Quebec, and New Brunswick. For the growth of sustainable economies, for wise and expedient and timely reduction in our greenhouse gases for all the wildlife threatened by extinction due to habitat loss. In faith we pray, we pray to you, our God. At the Eucharist, where we come together as Christ gathered with his friends to give us this meal of holy fellowship, listen as we pray for all whom you have given us, our friends, and all whose lives are joined with ours, for our family members, for our church family, for our friends. In faith we pray together. We pray to you, our God. At the Eucharist, where we remember the night of Christ's agony and trial, listen, O Lord, as we pray for all who share his sufferings through fear or pain or distress of many kinds. This day we pray for Keith and Catherine, Gabe and Lorraine, Karen, Diane, George, Lorna, baby Kavya, baby Enzo, Richard, Rose, Ricardo, Joe, Joanna, Nicole, Joan, Doris, Sarah, Linnea, Shanta, the Verges family. In faith we pray, we pray to you, our God. Lord, satisfy our hunger with the food that lasts, the bread of God which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now for the blessing. Christ, who nourishes us with himself, the living bread, make us one in praise and love and raise us up at the last day with the blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen. Have a blessed day today, Thursday.